Hey folks, what's up? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Block Mode in Reason. Block Mode is a tool for really quickly building your songs, arranging them, getting all the parts put together, and it's really powerful, but it also has some drawbacks. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is teach you how to start using block mode, show you some of its shortfalls, and then show you how to do some advanced tricks, three, that can help you actually get over some of these shortfalls with blocks. Um, Blocks are going to save you a lot of time and they can really help you, especially if you're just starting out producing and get overwhelmed by song structure. If you are looking to take your music production in Reason to the next level, I've got a free Reason mastering template. It'll make your mixes louder, harder, better, stronger. Daft Punk would almost certainly be in favor of them. There's a link to download that below. All right, now let's learn about block mode. So the first thing is that by default, Block mode isn't active in Reason. So you have to go up here to the options section and click enable block mode. So <laughs> if block mode isn't show showing up, that's how you do it. Next, what we do is we get to the sequencer, right? And I'm just gonna play, I've got a couple loops. I've got a, um, a pattern in a redrum and a loop in the Dr. Octorex player here. So let's just listen to what the song sounds like quote unquote song, uh, we'll just hit play. So by default, this is just what the two, the pattern and the loop are playing. But let's say we also have, you know, this is, instead we wanna have a verse that's gonna sound like this. So we've got a different pattern and a different loop. Let's listen to this. And then we want it to go back to this original sound. Well, sure, you could draw each section in and to the sequencer overall, and that would work, but it's gonna be a lot more effort potentially. It's gonna be slower. And um, especially if you're working on more repetitive music, it's not really worth the effort. So instead what we can do is we can enable block mode. So you can either go up here where it says block or hit the B key and you get into block mode. So you'll notice along the top first, right now it says verse, but by default, it's just going to say block one. So you could go up here and type in the name of your section. And then what I have done is I have used the right clicked on my uh, redrum and done copy pattern to track. And that has exported the drum pattern to this block one, AKA the verse. And I have done the same thing on my Octorex and I have copied the loop to track. Now let's see what happens if I hit play on the block. Why it's all phasey. And this is just the way it works by default when you copy a loop into the track from reason or a pattern into the track because it is both it's telling reason basically both to trigger the patterns based on these onboard built-in step sequencer and loop player and based on the information that it's getting from the block so in order to get rid of this phasiness you need to disable this right here which is enable pattern selection or pattern section and you need to Disable Enable Loop Playback. Now let's see what happens if we hit play. So there you, there you go. That's the first step to making blocks work for you if you've got pattern-based things already in your song. But how can this help us overall? Well, let's go back here. We now hit B again to go back to song mode. B just toggles back and forth. So we can go up to the top here and select the pen key or hit W and we can just draw in the verse as we want it. So I'm just gonna move this marker way over. You'll see if we go into the verse or into the block mode, you'll notice based on where the E is that the block right now is eight bars long. 
but we only have four bars of information. So we could either use the E to shorten the length of the block. And now you'll see there's this black divider here, which means that we've now got two iterations of the block, or we could leave the E over here and just copy the original section. And now from song mode, we could just hit Now it's that second iteration. So, so far we haven't saved any time, right? But now the way it really is helpful is if we hit B again and go right here where it says verse on the left and go down to block two and now we say chorus. And here what we're gonna do is we are going to go back to the hip hop kit, sorry, uh, go back to the hip hop kit, select pattern one, right click, and say copy pattern to track. Now, if we look at the chorus, we'll see that now we have this new pattern imported to this section. We are going to keep the same synth part going, um, or we could change it if we wanted to. So let's maybe just change it to this. What we're gonna do is first copy loop to track. Now we've got the way Rex works is that Basically, this is telling it what slice to trigger, and this is telling us it which of the eight patterns it's running from. And by default right now, if you just hit copy loop to pattern, it's not switching between these two. It's still going to be triggering from number one, which is where the first sample or the first loop is coming from. So we have to go down to notes to slot and drag this up to number three. And now it should be playing the third set of notes. So let's just listen to how the chorus sounds, quote unquote. Very cool, right? So now if we go back to song mode, we select the pen again, and we can draw in a section. It still says verse. But we can drag it down and have it now say chorus. And you see how we could very easily then draw in another verse. If you had a bridge, whatever it is, you can easily get these repeating parts. And let's just listen to how they cycle between each other. So we'll go from the chorus to the verse, or from the verse to the chorus. Pretty cool. Now, there are some drawbacks to this though. First of all, you cannot edit <laughs> these patterns outside of the block. So let's say you wanted to have a drum fill going in from the verse to the chorus. Well, that's not in the pattern. You would either have to create a variation to your verse, like if we go into verse, or er, sorry, well, yeah, if we go to the verse, like what we could do is we could copy all of this. I'm just going to hit control C to copy it. And we could go here and we could call this verse two. And if we paste it in, then we could, let's say, take these drums here and just add a little drum fill. And that would be the difference. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the First, in verse two, I'm gonna make it half as long, but if we listen. Now, if we go to verse one, what I'm gonna do is also make it half as long. And it's just gonna have the regular ending. Now, if we go to song mode, what we can do is cut verse two in half. I could make it smaller, or I could select it and just use the razor tool and cut it in half. And now we can select this and make it verse two. And let's say I wanted to make any changes to the verse one, well, it would all carry through. So let's just hear how these three sections kind of work together.
So that is the first advanced tip is that you can use shorter sections and add fills. Another way you could approach this, this is part two of the first advanced tip is let's say we go back to this verse. What we could do is just, if we zoom in a little bit more, we could just leave the last quarter of the drums blank. And then we could go in here, zoom in and sorry, draw in just a manual drum fill on this last section. And so now if we play this song, just from here, And instead of using verse two, we'll say, change verse two back to verse one. And then we could draw in a totally different fill here in the second part. And so by leaving it blank, you can basically leave yourself space for these embellishments. Now, right, if I were to make this verse two, well, there's already notes there as a fill, so it's gonna get real weird. So that's the second, or that's the first, the second part of the first tip. But like I said, you can't change the individual parts within the block, but one way to add more variety to your song is that if something isn't contained in a block, it can instead be contained in song mode. So we could just create a, um, we'll just create a Europa. And what I'm gonna do, we'll go to the rack just to make something really easy to do for today. We'll just put in a player and we'll put in the, and so now if we go here, So the point is simply that you can create instrument parts that go across blocks, but not within blocks. Every block needs to be the same. The third tip I have for you is that automation can also go across blocks. So let's say we let's go to the mixer first and I'll show you a couple of examples of this. So we could go to the mixer and on the drums, we could automate the mute. For example, let's say in the very first intro of the song, so to speak, we want the drums muted. Well, mute is going to be on now. that longer without having to reprogram the verse we're programming automation elsewhere and we could also do like a high pass filter type thing on the drums if we wanted so they would come in over time or a low pass filter whatever you want so we'll edit the automation on this filter over the first whole verse so it will be on and then it'll turn off in the chorus and it'll be off on the second verse. Oops. Um, and we want to select the channel with the frequency. That's too long. And we will just do a simple filter sweep. But these are ways you can automate effects to turn on and off. So now let's just listen to how you can add and how we have added interest just by doing some automation. Unfortunately, I don't know of any way in reason to trigger these various sections, these blocks, 
just by using keys. It's not like Machine or Ableton or something where you can really remix the order of the song on the fly. Uh, that's as far as I know, but if you know of a way to do that, please do let us know in the comments. I really hope this was helpful. I hope you start experimenting with blocks, using it to speed up your workflow, um, and use these advanced tips to get around some of the roadblocks of the blocks.